Hello there, my name is Miles the Prower, and this is my Variety Hour. This is just a place where I'm gonna talk about whatever I feel like, or maybe play a game, or some whack-ass food. And today I'm wanting to talk about the Sonic the Hedgehog Encyclopedia. It came out a few months ago, and it changes some parts of the canon, has some cool factoids, and they've just been jumping around in my brain since I read through it. And I just need to put that shit out there to let people know what these changes in the canon are, because it's been driving me crazy. So, to start from the beginning, in Sonic the Hedgehog 1, it does confirm that Eggman's name is Ivo Robotnik. Now, most people know that if you played the games in the English translation, but in Japan, he's always been called Eggman. And on Eggman's page on Sonic Channel, it says that his real name is unknown. But the Encyclopedia is confirming, yet again, that his name is Ivo Robotnik, and he started going by Eggman after Sonic Adventure. The next thing I wanted to talk about was Waku Waku Sonic Patrol Car. If you don't know what Waku Waku Sonic Patrol Car is, it was a weird children's arcade ride where Sonic was a cop and you would just kind of control the car while it moves while you're sitting in it. It was a children's ride, but it was also a game. And it was only in Japan. But Waku Waku Sonic Patrol Car was the first time Sonic and Eggman had voices. So I just thought that was a cool tidbit. That's not important to canon, but it's kind of weird to think about. Next is Sonic 2. So Sonic 2 was originally gonna have the time travel gimmick. Now this was something that I remembered hearing around for years, but couldn't find any actual sources on it. But now here it is in the Encyclopedia, confirming that yes, Sonic 2 was going to have the time travel gimmick. And one of the remnants of this is that Hilltop Zone was going to be the past version of Emerald Hill Zone. Next up is Sonic 2 on the Game Gear. The Encyclopedia confirms that Robo Sonic and Silver Sonic are actual names in the franchise. Because Silver Sonic was just kind of a fan name for the Sonic bot in Sonic 2, and I know that I've heard the term Robosonic used around. Silver Sonic was adopted in the Archie comics, but as of now, the one from Sonic 2 on the Genesis is called Mecha Sonic Mark 1, and then the one from Sonic 3 and Knuckles is Mark 2, and then Mark 3 is that one in the tube from Adventure. But old Noodle Arms might not actually be a Mecha Sonic. It's either Silver Sonic or it's Robosonic, according to the Encyclopedia. Next up is Sonic CD. The Encyclopedia hints that CD is supposed to take place between Sonic 1 and 2. Now, again, some fans are like, oh, well, no shit, we've known that for years. But when Sonic 4 came out, they retconned it to have CD take place after 3 and K. For, like, the whole Metal Sonic theme, which 4 might not be canon anymore, so who cares? but the Encyclopedia is really nudging towards CD taking place in between 1 and 2. And the Encyclopedia also brings up that weird statue of, like, a human woman, and then when you get to the bad future, it turns into a booby-trapped Eggman, and this statue is called the Rain Dispensing Goddess. Next up is Sonic Triple Trouble, and it confirms that Fane's name is Fane the Sniper. He is not Knack the Weasel. He is Fane the Sniper. He puts its foot down hard on that. He is now Fane the Sniper. And it does confirm that Fane is a Jarboa. He's a half Jarboa, half wolf hybrid. Now, some of you might be wondering, what the hell is a Jarboa? A Jarboa is a weird little rat thing that hops around with a really long tail. It doesn't use its tail to hop, but it has a long tail and it is native to Japan. So, we've known this for a few years, but you would only know this if you were some whack-ass Sonic lore master. So somebody asked the guy who designed Fane, hey, what the fuck is Fane supposed to be? And he re responded with, I designed Fane with a Jarboa in mind. 
but that's all we got. We never knew where this half wolf thing came from. But now we know. It is confirmed canon. Bane is a half Jarboa, half wolf. Next is Sonic Schoolhouse, because everyone's favorite Sonic game. Fuck Sonic X on a Leapster, bro. This this is the shit me and my homies fuck with. Sonic's first English voice actor in the games was actually a woman, and it was in Sonic Schoolhouse. She has been the only woman to portray Sonic. Next is Tails Adventure. This confirms that Tails Adventure takes place before he meets Sonic. So some people might not know that this game even existed, but it was a solo Tails game on the Sega Game Gear. And in the English manual, it says that it takes place after Sonic 2 and Tails goes on a vacation. The Japanese version says that it takes place before he ever met Sonic. The Encyclopedia puts its foot down and states that it takes place before Sonic 2. Next is Sonic Adventure. Sonic Adventure confirms that Two Worlds was never possible. There was an interview around 2010 when Sonic Colors was coming out, and people asked about Sonic's world, and Azuka said that there were two worlds, Sonic's world and the human world, and Colors takes place on the Sonic world. That made no fucking sense, and almost everybody thought that it was a stupid idea. Now it is currently not the canon, there is one world thanks to the uh, Tales Tube video that came out. But the Encyclopedia talks about how the humans make reference to Little Planet and Angel Island in the Japanese dialogue. So that would not make sense if there were two mm -hmm. worlds. Granted, it doesn't matter anymore because two worlds isn't a thing anymore. Thank God. Next is Sonic Battle. Battle confirms that the Nocturnus clan are not canon anymore. It states that the Nocturnus did not make the Gizoids because Chronicles has been dropped from the canon. Now this is kind of interesting because in the Encyclopedia, every other game is not stated if it's canon or not. There's little sections that say everything is canon, but Sonic Chronicles is the one game that is specifically stated as not being canon anymore. So now the Gizoids, we don't know where they came from. The Nocturnus aren't canon, and if you're wondering why, it's because Sega doesn't want to deal with Ken Penders. And if you don't know who Ken Penders is, I don't have time to get into it right now, but uh, let me know if you want me to make a nice juicy long video on exactly who the hell Ken Penders is and what the hell he did and what the current state of his comic is. Next is Sonic Rush. Sonic Rush confirms that Eggman Nega is from the future and is a descendant of Eggman. So one of the contested things was, is Nega from the Soul Dimension, where Blaze is from, or is he from the future? So the Encyclopedia puts its foot down and says, no, he is from the future. He's a descendant of Dr. Ivo Eggman Robotnik, and he has the ability to travel from the future into the past and into other dimensions. And the Encyclopedia kind of hints that he is dead and we're never going to see him again. Which, if you ask me, is a good thing because Eggman Nega is not an interesting villain. Next is Sonic Rivals 2. And it brings up Metal Sonic 2.0 and how he really just doesn't seem to be special at all. He can just do everything that Metal Sonic can. That's all it states. Nobody's quite sure what happened to Model 2.0, so he also just kind of vanishes. And we'll probably never see him again, which is fine by me, because just like Eggman Nega, he's not interesting, and he doesn't have a very great design. Next to Sonic Rush Adventure, and it says that Marine may have water abilities. So, personally, I have never played Sonic Rush Adventure. Yes, I know, that makes me a fake Sonic fan, please wait till the end of this before you crucify me. So from what I know about Marine is that towards the end of the game, it hints that she has like some weird water manipulation or some crap. Well, the Encyclopedia just says she might. She maybe has these powers. So who knows, maybe Sega's going back on that and she doesn't have them anymore. And maybe we'll see Marine again at some point. But who knows, Sega doesn't seem too keen on Marine. Next is Sonic Unleashed. And it talks about how in the animated short Night of the Werehog, the two ghosts that show up that try to spook Sonic and Chip are actually in one of the side missions in Sonic Unleashed. 
and I just thought that was neat. And that forces Knight of the Werehog into the cannon. If you disagree, uh, fuck you, I hate you, and you can come and fight me. Just DM me, I'll give you my address. Unleashed also confirms that that robot that helps Eggman that looks a lot like Orbot is not called Orbot. I have seen a few people in the fandom call him Orbot. I have for years because it's basically Orbot. But no, his name is just SA-55. Sonic Adventure 55 confirmed. Because Sega will just skip three. They'll skip three through 49. Why did I say 49? I'm leaving that in. That's staying in. You guys can make fun of me. Next is Sonic and Sega All-Stars Transform. Now here, here is the deep, the deep shit, the good canon. This is, this is the shit I have been waiting to talk about for months. Danica Patrick is canon. That's, that's all it is. She's totally canon. This is not a joke. She's canon. Feel free to fight me. Next is Sonic Generations, and this is a this is a good one. I like this one a lot. So for anyone who's played Generations and remembers the Metal Sonic fight, if you notice, it's Stardust Speedway, but it's the bad future. Ever since I was a kid, I thought that meant Sonic canonically fucks up, and the bad future happens. And in the Encyclopedia, it says. Make the best of a bad future and start a speedway with classic Sonic. So, the Encyclopedia itself hints that the bad future is canonically what happens. Does that make any sense? Probably not, but uh, Sonic might canonically fuck up. Next up is Sonic Mania. It talks about the Encore mode and the Sonic Mania Adventure shorts. So, for a while, fans you know, I've been contesting which one is the, the canon, what actually happens when Classic Sonic gets back from forces. And the Encyclopedia doesn't say, but it just says blame the other one on Phantom Ruby shenanigans. So one of them might just be an uh, illusion. Does that make sense? No. I personally, I go with Encore mode being the canon just because it is the game. But I like the uh, mini adventures, they're really fun. Also, Mania confirms that the hooligans do actually show up. So no, I'm not talking about the illusions that the Heavy Magician does for the fight at the end of Mirage Saloon Act 2. When you're done with Act 1, one of the hooligans shows up. Either Bane shoots you out of the sky, Bean throws a bomb at you, or Bark hits the turtle causing it to shoot you out of the sky. That is canonically one of the hooligans. That is not the Heavy Magician. You can tell because there isn't the weird magic aura around them. So canonically, yes, the hooligans do actually show up in Mania. I just thought that was really fucking cool. Next is Sonic Forces. So this is one that I've seen go around a bit before the Encyclopedia was released, but I'm still going to talk about it because I hear some confusion about it. So it states that Infinite, after his defeat, gets consumed. Him in the prototype phantom ruby that he uses get consumed by the original ruby and that's just kind of it so it doesn't say that he's dead he might just be in an alternate dimension but it wouldn't be null space because they would just say oh he's in null space now we still don't know what happened to the original ruby which that might be trapped somewhere in null space now that i think about it because eggman uses it to power his last death egg robot thing at the end of the game so infinite might come back but i seriously doubt it unless we see the phantom ruby again which i seriously doubt sega doesn't even let the comic writers use infinite or the phantom ruby they're barely allowed to talk about forces in the comics so yeah we can basically say infinite's dead and last up is the end of the book with the timeline. So the Encyclopedia has a timeline, but it doesn't make any fucking sense because games are out of order. Not it, it's the timeline is like from date of release, which makes sense. But when you say timeline, it makes it seem like, oh, this is the timeline of the games, which would not make any fucking sense 
because Tails Adventure is way after things like Sonic Blast and Sonic Triple Trouble. So, you know. I just thought I would throw that in there. Because it doesn't make any fucking sense. And that is everything I wanted to talk about with the Encyclopedia. Maybe I'll come back to it and I'll just read off random crap from it. Maybe I'll just do a thing talking all about the bad Nick descriptions. Who knows? But, uh, yeah. This is the end of the video. If you liked it, uh, I, I don't know. Stick around. I'm gonna try to upload more. If you hated it, I don't know, then leave. I, I don't know why you're still here. But, uh, if you have any suggestions for literally anything you want me to talk about, because I'm not just gonna do Sonic stuff, I'll probably always come back to Sonic fairly often because I really like Sonic. But any suggestions on anything to talk about, let me know. And until next time, I hate you, don't you dare press...